All right, welcome to the third day. Uh, so we are starting with, uh, with Jiri on K-Probe multi-updates. Yeah, take it away. Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Jiri Olsha. I work at Isoval and at Cisco. Uh, I'd like to give an update on some recent developments in K-Probe uh, -Pro multi. Basically, I have like two topics. First is like a uh, new feature that was recently added, uh, and half of it is still like needs to be sent. And the other topic is uh, the redesign of FPro layer that's happening for some time. And um, because KPro multi is uh, based on FPro, so we care. So I like to give an update on that. So first, uh, the session. Uh, it's a new uh, attachment type on top of Kprop Multi. Kprop Multi is a uh, BPF link that allows you to attach uh, multiple uh, Kprops uh, very fast. This new attachment type um, basically allows you to attach one program to both entry and exit probe uh, for a single function. And on top of that, it allows you also to control uh, the execution of the return probe. Uh, and also, it allows you to share the value between uh, the entry probe execution and, uh, and the return probe uh, execution. Uh, we can actually do it even right now. So uh, what's the reason to add, attach, uh, to add new attachment type? The reason is that you can do it right now, but it's uh, expensive to actually attach program to the entry and the return probe. You need to create two separate uh, links. And moreover, the, the link for to attach the return probe actually adds the entry and then uh, install the return. So it's kind of waste. And also, there's no control of execution of the, uh, of the return probe. Uh, the idea of doing something like this, basically in Tetragon, we have um, sort of use case. One of the use cases is that you attach to the function, to the entry and the return probe. And typically, in the entry probe, you do all sorts of uh, filtering. And based on that filtering, you want to either execute the return probe or not. So at the moment, we always had to install the return probe and like use maps uh, to actually like propagate the decision if the return probe should be executed or not. So this will actually speed up uh, this use case for us. So how it looks uh, in more uh, details. So basically, it's a new uh, attachment type. Uh, you use Kprobe uh, multi-link like you would normally. There's extra flag uh, in the interface uh, that tells this one single program will be attached as an entry and uh, return probe. Uh, there are new kfunks uh, that will, uh, that will uh, help you with the operation. So it's one program, so you need to actually have some way to say I'm in the entry probe or return probe. So that's why the new kfunk BPF session is return. Is there basically it returns you, it returns true if you are in the return probe. Then you can share uh, the value, the cookie, BPF session cookie. Uh, so typically you would set it in the entry program. Uh, you can use the BPF session cookie. It will give you the pointer uh, to the eight bytes buffer and you, you set it in the entry probe, and uh, you use it in the return probe to uh, get, the, get the value. It will exist uh, with the same interface for both uh, K-probe and uh, U-probe. So in that regard, it will be easy to use. It is easy to use at some point now. Uh, just to show uh, some example, so Basically, there's this uh, lead uh, BPF elf session uh, support. So if you actually write kprobe uh, session and the name of the function, you will get it automatically attached uh, in the session mode. You use the BPF session is returned to find out where you are, entry or exit probe. You do uh, your logic. 
And basically, uh, the entry probe returning 0 or 1 uh, decides if the return probe is executed uh, or, or not. The cookie at the moment, we have like uh, the attachment cookie, which is prepared in the user space. And uh, the BPF programs are uh, able to get it in the program. So that's what we have at the moment uh, for the session. It works a bit differently. It's not touched by the user space, but it's basically uh, touched only by the BPF uh, program. So that's, uh, that's uh, how you can actually use it. BPF session cookie will give you the pointer. And based on where you are, uh, you will either set the pointer or, or uh, you will use it in the, in the return probe execution of that program. So as I said, it will be the same for K-probe uh, and the U-probe. K-probe part is uh, already merged. Uh, it works on current uh, K-probe multi uh, implementation, of course. Uh, F-probe supports uh, all the control we need and the session. And the topic I will be discussing just uh, in a few minutes, the F-probe on graph, of course, uh, supports all of this uh, as well. So should be safe there. U-probe is a bit more uh, difficult. That's why it hasn't been posted yet. Uh, basically, uh, U-probe, K-probe was easy because it already had the logic, like if entry probe returns uh, zero, let's execute uh, the return handler. Uh, so it was already there. So we just uh, like use that. U-probe, it doesn't have the logic. It actually, if it doesn't return zero at the moment, it removes the U-probe completely. Uh, also, the session support was not there, uh, like uh, in the layer. So that needs to be implemented as well. And yeah, it's, it's coming. Uh, it will be posted shortly. So that's the, that's the new attachment type. I guess if you have any questions to this, then I will continue to the other topic. It's straightforward. OK, moving on, F-probe on graph. So there's ongoing pipeset development uh, by Masami Hiramasu and Steven Rosted. Uh, you can find it, the latest version, uh, in the link. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's on the uh, BP, BPF list. Um, basically, what's happening is that uh, it's redesigning the F-probe uh, to be implemented on the F-graph. It's basically adding a uh, new, uh, new uh, layer. And why do we care exactly? Because Capro Multi is uh, using F-probe, and it's quite substantial redesign. So I thought it might have been a good idea to show what it actually means for us. So after discussing with Masami uh, and seeing the pipe set, I put together the objectives. Uh, so basically, the idea is to uh, consolidate uh, the return tracers. So there's K red return probe, and F probe can do the return probe tracing. And both of them uh, uses uh, the red hook, which is the way we do the return tracing uh, at the moment. And uh, the idea of this patch set is actually to implement the return uh, uh, tracing using the shadow stack, which I'll get to uh, in the next slides. And is to replace this like multiple residue implementation with the FGRAP and actually even uh, speed it up because Redux uh, is slower than uh, the shadow stack as it shows uh, in the benchmarks that I will show as well. So at the moment, this patch set is actually uh, doing this for the F probe. Uh, Masami told me the idea is to use it. Uh, like reimplement uh, K-RED probe in the future uh, using F-graph as well. So what it means uh, for us, so basically this is, uh, this is the current, uh, current stack uh, 
that's happening when you are tracing the fun function with the KPROG multi. This is the layers that we go through before we actually uh, execute uh, the BPF program. So first, like from the function, you have the, at the beginning of the function, there's the F trace, uh, F -trace hook, F trace call that goes uh, to the F trace. It calls uh, all the users that are registered uh, for this function. Uh, one of them is fprobe, uh, and fprobe does the same for its users, and one of them is kprobe multi, which actually execute uh, the BPF program. So that's how it looks uh, for us at the moment. What the pipeset does is that it adds uh, extra uh, layer. So fgrub basically is the user of the ftrace, and as such is uh, executed. Uh, from the F-trace when the, when the probe is hit. And yeah, F-probe is still uh, stays as the user of the f uh, so the rest is uh, basically uh, the same. Uh, to actually implement F-probe or f uh, the F-probe layer change a lot. So it's basically not just adding the f layer, but also the redesign means that the F probe layer uh, change, change a lot as well. So what is F graph? Uh, F graph is basically uh, another user of the F trace. That means it uses the F trace ops uh, structure and uh, register it uh, to monitor like all any of the traceable functions uh, in the kernel. Uh, basically. Uh, there's the uh, there's this interface where you uh, need to have fgrab ops object. You specify your entry and return function, and fgrab will take care of like on the entry function you will get callback on the entry func on the return function you will get callback uh, on the return function. There's a limitation uh, like in the system that there can be only 16 instances of uh, running fgrab. Uh, uh, tracers. Uh, the limitation, as I understand it, comes like from the shadow stack uh, maintenance that I will go uh, in the into in in the next slides. And basically, fprobe uh, is using one instance of the fgrab tracer, which has also like implications that I will get into in the next slides. So, what is the shadow stack? So, shadow stack replace the red hook. It actually means to uh, do the uh, return tracer. Basically, it's it's one extra page uh, for its process, which is allocated like whenever there's like first uh, register, first user of the fgraph tracer. Uh, all the processes uh, in the system will get allocated one extra page, which serves. Uh, as the shadow stack, and basically the usage for it is uh, when you get the entry point, uh, the entry of the function going through the uh, ftrace and going through fgrab, uh, fgrab will store uh, control data to the shadow stack. Uh, by the control data, I mean it's the data indicating should I execute the return probe or not, and when. The, there is the return probe executed. It goes uh, to the shadow stack, to the values, and it actually sees, like, should I be executing the return probe or not for, uh, for which uh, graphs users. I put together a bit of the graphic to make it uh, more apparent, hopefully. So uh, when you go uh, through the function tracer, uh, you eventually, if there's an fgrab registered, you end up uh, in the callback to the fgrab. And each graph tracer is ftrace uh, user. So it eventually will get executing uh, the entry function, like that the user for the fgrab is actually executing. And that function will, uh, the function by the return value will actually say, should there be a return probe executed or not? And the data got stored uh, to the shadow stack. Uh, the shadow stack is uh, per process, so for this process we want uh, to, there's the data indicating do we want the return probe to be executed when the return actually happens. 
when there's another uh, another user, like another fgrab, going through the same function on the same process, it will use the uh, stack data to actually store this uh, control information. Uh, so whatever number of the users get uh, through the function, it will all the information about the return probe will be actually stored in the shadow stack. When the return actually happens, uh, the fgrab will actually go. Uh, to the shadow stack and see, okay, I need to execute, uh, I need to execute the return handlers for uh, for this particular graph ops user, and here is actually uh, where the limitation for the 16 of instances of the graph uh, tracer actually comes from. I guess you need to have like some some final number. Uh, is this 16 per function or like 16 per system? Like what? Per system, like. So like if I attach 16 different K probes, oh, that will be fine because it's going through F probe, right? It's one F probe. But like if, if let's say multi K probe was directly a user of F trace graph, right? Then like 17th probe will be rejected, right? So. At the moment, how it is? So, kprobe multi has like each instance has like fprobe uh, instance, and fprobe instance all fprobe instances are using just one single fgrab tracer. I will get it on the, to this on the next slide. Okay. So that's on the fgrab how it works. Uh, now, what it means for the fprobe? So, at the moment, every kprobe multi instance is the user of the fprobe instance, so that stays. And at the moment, every fprobe was actually user uh, of the ftrace ops, like ftrace user. So that was like a one-to-one -one relation uh, there. What's happening now is that fprobe, all the fprobe instances, like the whole layer, is using just uh, one fgrab ops user. That means that uh, when the fgrab is actually called, uh, there's just uh, there's just like uh, one fgrab entry function, and when it gets to the fprobe layer, you have just one IP, and you need to figure out like how many fprobe instances there are. So there's actually hash table, uh, not that complicated, but not uh, uh, like the usual hash table uh, lookup, which based on the IP, it will get you all all registered fprobe instances, and it will execute uh, the entry, entry handler for them. And fprobe, basically, the entry handler is the is the kprobe multi uh, callback that we that we register. Uh, when this actually happens, every every of such callbacks can return again zero or one, indicating should I execute the return probe or not. And it will same as in the fgrab layer. This information will be encoded on the shadow stack. And when it will actually, when it gets back, uh, the F probe return again is just single function, so it will uh, it will be triggered just one for the whole F probe layer. It will decode those F probe objects uh, from the shadow stack and execute the exit handlers. So that's that's why I said the F probe layer actually changed a lot because uh, before the relation between the F probe and F trace was one to one, and we had this callback, and we knew like immediately what is the fprobe object that that we are actually tracing. Uh, right now, we don't know that. We just know the IP address, and we need to find out the fprobe objects. Okay, so there uh, <coughs> there is the limitation of the shadow stack is part of the reason why we do the uh, the 16 limit. There's other <coughs> there's we have hard coded arrays too, but. It's possible that in the future, right now, it would be much more complex as we require RCU type changes and such like that, that we could actually make it and as many you want. But to do so, we'd have to extend, find a way to dynamically increase the size of the shadow stack from one page to multiple pages. So we'd have to do a calculation. Uh, we'd have to like an analyze the kernel every so often and say, how, how deep can the kernel go? In a sh so what's the deepest that uh, the kernel can go in? Then we have to do the calculation of, OK, if we have like 16 
or 18 or whatever uh, additions, they each have like a amount of memory that they could do. So we'd have to do like a max worst case, how much stack do we need? And for 16, actually, I think six, if you actually added 16, you probably could blow away the uh, shadow stack as right now. Right now, I, I actually overcommitted. If it does go over the shadow stack, you just fail, it will just not call your function. It, it will not crash, it will just fail to call your functions, which could fail your system, but not that. But in the future, we just want to let you know, in the future, if we were to extend it, maybe it could go back to one-to-one -one with the K probe just right oh, in there, okay. too. Uh, but like I said, that, that would just make things about three, four times more complex to implement that code, but it's possible. It seems already complex, like the storage <laughs> yeah, exactly. of the shadow stack, it's quite. <laughs> yeah, so another question is like, I'm trying to understand just in simple terms, like what, like why do we need so many layers, right? Like what does ftrace graph do that fprobe doesn't, or like what does fprobe do that ftrace cannot provide, right? Like why we have like these two layers? So the whole trick is the uh, yeah the whole trick is the saving of the return addresses and for multiple users. So there's several like right now I guess K probe the K rep probe does per instance you get your own shadow stack but then if you do too many functions you overload the shadow stack. So the the pros and cons with the K rep probe was it's just one shadow stack for your use user, and if you actually go too deep or whatever, it could or too many functions to trace. I guess there's a limitation on that. The ftrace, the F function graph, allows all functions because what it does is it adds a shadow stack for every single task. So everyone's using it's just like a normal um, uh, stack, but it's a shadow stack that's used just for recording of the return address. And there's also more information. You could on the entry of the function, you actually could store specific information. Like if you want to store the arguments or something, you could store that on the shadows. There's a API to store that onto the shadow stack and you retrieve that afterwards. But now we have a limitation of the shadow stack. Right now we have one page of shadow stack because you know if you have a thousand tasks, it's a thousand pages. So you know we have to figure out pros and cons. How much memory do we want to use? If we make it two pages and add more. But each time you do that, so what the function graph tracer gives you is the fact that it's all tasks and you could, um, it allows the uh, probes and everything to trace more functions without worried of failures in that case. So that's the uh, give and take. And also one other thing is doing tracing of return functions very complex and having two implementations has been, people have been complaining about that because they change, like the way the compilers are changing, functions are changing, all these things change and what happens is we have two things to maintain and the, as we said, this is not easy code to maintain and it becomes complex. So there's been a lot of push to say, can you guys consolidate this into a single thing? Because this is different for every, every architecture has to implement this. Yeah. Okay, do you want to also address the overhead of indirect calls while I did? Okay, so I, yeah, we were talking about this earlier about the indirect call um, because there is the overhead because of repolines. Now we could, in most use cases, a lot of time this is another. This may also be something good for the uh, the single use F probe. Is the fact that if you have one user, we could make use like um, do what trace uh, trace events do, or tra sorry, trace points do. Trace points. Do, what trace points do is if you have one instance of a trace point, it will actually use static call. Uh, to call directly to your callback. So there is no indirect call. It just says, tells the trace point when you hit this, call directly to whoever the callback is. And you don't have the overhead of repolene and all the mitigation of specter. Now, we could do the same with this. We could have a way of a, um, where the function, where it do, does a callback, have it be a static call. And it will either call a single function or it will call a function that will do the loop uh, or the, the dynamic array. Another thing that we could do if we don't want to do static call, we could also put it if we find that there is more than one user or of it. Since there's a limited, limited amount of or a finite amount of um, functions that get called back, we could actually put in a like an ID that you just register an ID and it does a switch statement that just says, hey, this guy calls, jump to the, you know, go to this switch statement and do a direct call that way. Yeah, the latter would uh, allow like more aggressive inlining actually. It will be faster, generally. It will be uglier, but it will be faster. <laughs> uh, it will be faster than a static call? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Well, I, I tried that locally with existing code, yeah. It, oh. do, it does help quite a lot for like K, K probe multi, K red probe multi. And you, and you did that against So us. basically what I added I was like, if ops is like our K, K, yeah. K probe multi handler, then call it directly. Yeah. And, and like the, the 
always inline version of, of this. Oh, callback. so basically because if, if there's something inline, it would just do the yeah, inline so call. you get like a huge F probe handler that like just kind of inlines the multi-K probe. Oh, I see what you're saying. So just inline the stuff if yeah, it's So you want like fu function call uh, overhead and also like, for example, multi-K probe uh, uh, handler like doesn't use some of the parameters. So I think like compiler just optimizes all that out, right? Yeah. I mean, we could play with that a little bit. Yeah. But like I said, this is going to be going into, I'm sure one of your slides is like, when is this going to go into the kernel? Um, next, uh, it's going, right now it's one of my priorities is to get this in. Um, and by next, next merge, not this merge window, it's, or which is open right now, next merge window, part of it at least, I'll, I'll guarantee part of it will be going in. I don't, maybe all of the patches, we'll have to see how, it's, it's complex recording. code and I always get very nervous about pushing too much complex code in one merge window, although, so. At least part of it will go in this merge window, the rest of it will go in the next merge window, or we might be, if I feel comfortable enough, to put the whole thing in. Perfect. I have last two slides about the performance that we were able to measure uh, so far. So uh, there's been few. This one is mine. Uh, I can see the speed up in the uh, character of multi, like that's to be expected, meaning that shadow stack actually is faster than the current Red Hook uh, implementation. Uh, the rest of the changes I perceive sort of as a noise. I get it a bit different every run. Entry did another uh, benchmarks, and it actually uh, shows like some degradation for current uh, carrot probe, which is strange because it shouldn't be touched by this redesign. But uh, that's something we need to we need to figure out and definitely run a bit more uh, a bit more benchmarks. And yeah, that's it. If you have any questions. Uh, just to clarify, the shadow stacks here, those aren't the same shadow stacks as in control flow integrity, right? No. Okay. No, these are, these are allocated by the uh, function graph logic. Okay, thank you. It's a different thing. Cool. Any other questions, comments? All right. Thank you very much. Thanks.